Welcome to Promoting Democracy Through Creative Curricular Design and Critical Inquiry. I'm Deborah sickler voigt Professor of Art Education and author of Teaching and Learning in Art Education, Cultivating Students' Potential from Pre-K through High School. During this presentation, designed for the Arts and Society Conference in Galway, Ireland, we will be discussing ways to design a choice-based arts curriculum using artist exemplars and themes of democracy. Democracy places power in the hands of the people. It is most effective when people work together to produce positive changes. In my own teaching, I use artist exemplars to teach students life skills that include topics and issues in democracy. Throughout this presentation, I will incorporate examples by visual and performing artists. One such artist is Nick Cave, who creates artworks called sound suits. Cave created his first sound suit after watching media reports of riots by African Americans who felt outraged when a jury acquitted the police officers who brutally beat Rodney King, an African American suspect in a car chase. To Cave, wearing a sound suit felt like body armor, as it became a source of protection against racial threats. Examining artworks and their meanings is an important part of comprehensive arts education. Comprehensive Arts Education is an in-depth curricular plan that guides students in achieving learning outcomes as lifelong learners. Its holistic, student-centered approach encourages students in making choices. Teachers facilitate student learning. Through Comprehensive Arts Education, we present context stories for students to develop greater understandings about the subject matter we teach. Its open-ended format encourages students to build connections based on prior knowledge. The model of comprehensive arts education I'm presenting here and have developed for my textbook, Teaching and Learning in Art Education, is a choice-based hybrid approach. It promotes democratic teaching and learning practices and references artists' ways of knowing. Applying best practices in arts education, teachers and students create, experiment, use open dialogue, participate in on-task play, and research. Students learn by participating in independent and collaborative tasks. This child's artwork can be used as a resource to discuss Holocaust awareness themes, such as how propaganda has been used against groups of people, resistance, and remembrance. Democratic teachings help cultivate students' full potential through arts education. As educators, we care about students' growth and development. We design an arts curriculum that challenges students. Our curriculum and instruction teach students to explore artistic behaviors, processes, and media to communicate ideas. The lessons we develop have value beyond school. We can begin to construct a choice-based arts curriculum by identifying our goals, available resources, and our specialized teaching skills. Our curriculum will encourage students' experimentation and creative risk. We will assist students who may fear trying new tasks and artistic behaviors. We will invite students to apply their knowledge to guide student-driven learning tasks. Goals are clear aims that drive the choice-based arts curriculum. This student artwork of a bicycle can serve as an analogy for teachers and students to set goals to get to where they want and need to go. Comprehensive lesson and unit plans include big ideas. Big ideas are broad topics students study in depth. They address significant human issues and remain relevant regardless of the times in which people live. This student mural centers on the big idea piece. It is one of many Kids Guernica Peace murals painted by children around the world. Standards are organized by grade level. They present what students can achieve. Their format supports teachers in incorporating their personal ideas and expertise to design grade level lesson and unit plans. Objectives are clear, measurable student behaviors that identify learning goals and expectations. 
The model I developed for teaching and learning in art education consists of four parts. The student will, a measurable student behavior, a stimulus, and criteria. Here is a sample objective focusing on democracy and student inquiry. The student will write a one-page artist statement in the class art journal that describes his, her, their creation of a democracy artwork, choice of art processes and media, and the artwork's intended impact. We can apply arts inquiry methods to teach students language and observation skills as they look at and create art. Inquiry tasks enrich students' learning experiences. In the visual arts, we study aesthetics, art criticism, inclusive art history, and visual culture studies. Inclusive inquiry studies provide students with opportunities to see people like themselves strive and succeed as creative individuals. This image of Unplug is a public service announcement that relates to aesthetics and visual culture studies. Students can decipher Unplug's meanings by analyzing its text, design, and images. To encourage open-ended teachings on contemporary artists, I have designed Artist Lessons to Thrive features. They provide a written narrative about artists' works. Each lesson contains a big idea, guiding and essential questions, creative learning tasks, and anchor standards from the National Visual Arts Standards. Their open-ended format offers flexibility in planning for students' ages, lesson durations, class procedures, materials, and types of assessments. Using the Artist Lessons to Thrive feature on Nick Cave, titled We All Need Protection, we can teach students about social ethics through art. Social ethic lessons teach contextualism, important stories and information related to an artist or artwork. These lessons invite students to participate in safe and empowering communications. To take their units of study to the next level, students might begin with a participatory action research study through which they become equal partners with experts such as teachers and community members to solve problems and bring about positive changes. Our lessons also teach about artistic concepts, behaviors, and techniques. When looking at Nick Cave's sound suits, students can identify elements of art such as texture, in principles of design, including movement and rhythm. We can discuss artistic mindsets and behaviors such as problem solving. Nick Cave designed his sound suits as a form of protection and reaction to racial discrimination. Comprehensive arts lessons regularly align with diverse subjects as students learn subject matter and context. We can use artist examples to foster multidisciplinary art studies. Our lessons can connect with STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, including the humanities, and mathematics. Comprehensive arts inquiry tasks augment students' oral language and writing skills because students learn to integrate academic arts vocabulary into their responses. Questioning through arts inquiry tasks serve as means for students to use their own thoughts and reflections to make connections. Sample essential questions that can guide a study of Nick Cave's sound suits and protection include, what is protection? And, why is protection a basic human need? Jean Quick to see Smith is an acclaimed contemporary artist, educator, activist, and member of the Confederated Salish and Kootenai Nation. Her mixed media painting, I See Red Herd illustrates the importance of bison in Native American history and addresses complex issues of race, identity, and stewardship. The painting's background contains repetitive images of collage bison that form new herds, replacing just a small fraction of the millions of bison that once roamed North America's grasslands. This Artist Lessons to Thrive feature describes how Smith has dedicated a lifetime of efforts through art, education, and activism to urge society to come together as a team to learn from past mistakes so that we can collectively set higher standards as good humanitarians and stewards of the earth. Artist Tella Storvik first discovered her Sami heritage at age 30 while attending a family reunion in northern Norway. 
The Sami are an indigenous people from the Arctic Samti region in Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Russia's Kola Peninsula. Artist Lessons to Thrive 6.1 on Hella Storvik focuses on big ideas of sites and assimilation and rejuvenation. For centuries, the Sami experienced harsh discrimination and cultural assimilation. Sami children were sent to boarding schools taught by non-Sami educators to eradicate Sami language and culture. Hella Storvik organized a collaborative art project titled Are We Still Here? to learn more about their Sami heritage. Meeting in Northern Norway, the artist invited Vesterolland's residents to share their experience and knowledge of their Sami origins. These events led to many questions including, what is this culture we are a part of? How should we be Sami? And how does one reinvent one's story? Honesty is the best policy. The Big Idea Honesty drives artists lesson to thrive 1.3 on paper artists Cher Christopher, and her sculpture, The Pied Piper. The Pied Piper fairy tale describes a medieval town infested with rats that had eaten all of the people's food and damaged their homes. In desperation, the people implored their mayor to find a solution to rid the town of its rats. A stranger called the Pied Piper approached the mayor when all hopes seemed to fail and promised to remove the rats from the town for a fair payment. The Pied Piper rid the town of its rats, and the mayor paid the Pied Piper much less than originally promised because he felt the job was too easy. Enraged and disillusioned, the Pied Piper believed that the town's children should not grow up in a place where they would become dishonest adults. He played his pipe and lured the children away to a distant land where they could sing, play, and live meaningful lives. We all have heard of unfair labor practices. Artist Lessons to Thrive 4.1 presents textile producer Oleana and their creations of fair made clothing. Oleana's leadership opposes unfair labor practices that treats people as machinery. They are prevalent in sweatshops and excessive profit driven companies. Oleana hires the best skilled individuals who also have a good sense of humor. Age is not important as its employees range from their 20s to 80s. Its leaders trust their employees and do not require time clocks. In the spring, all employees share a good part of the company's profits equally. Artist Sisavon Podovan Hoden came to the United States at age 4 from Laos. The Artist Lessons to Thrive feature 9.1 on her painting series titled Displacement, chronicles the stories of Laotian Americans who legally changed their names to assimilate into American culture. She interviewed 11 participants and secured copies of their citizenship certificate photographs. Her research revealed that the participants changed their names for multiple reasons. Some sense hostility when Americans were unable to pronounce their names. Others changed them for simple convenience. A final group was assigned new names by other Americans, including their school teachers. Over time, they became used to being called by their American names and changed them legally. Where Do We Go From Here guides Artist Lessons to Thrive 10.2 on Kim Suja and the theme of migration. As a child, Kim Suja moved around from place to place due to her father's military profession. She regularly packed her belongings in the traditional Korean bundle called a batari, a colorful silken sheet embroidered with symbols of fortune, hope, and fertility. Korean women tie their belongings securely inside of bataris to protect them. One day, Kim Suja recognized her personal bataris as sculptural forms and conceptualized her bataris as art. To create cities on the move, Kim Suja collected people's used clothing and bedding from flea markets. She assembled them into multiple bataris and stacked them onto the bed of a pickup truck. Sitting perched on top of her great stack of bataris, Kim Suja journeyed through 2,727 kilometers, approximately 1,695 miles of Korean cityscapes and landscapes over an 11-day period. She transformed her experience into a seven minute and three second documentary, which served as a metaphor to bring awareness to the emotional conditions of people who have been forced to migrate. 
Did you know that most built environment spaces are designed for the average male between the ages of 25 and 32? Artist Lessons to Thrive 17.1 discusses the work of architect Karen L. Breitmeier and her ability to create invisible, accessible design spaces for all people. Breitmeier teaches people to become more aware of the spaces they inhabit and the role of the built environment in daily life. Working as a general architect, fellow colleagues repeatedly approach Breitmeier for advice on how to design accessible spaces for people utilizing wheelchairs, given her architecture expertise and lifelong experience using a wheelchair. Breitmeier's interest in accessibility design burgeoned and she became an expert on the laws and guidelines related to developing accessible spaces. Her career achievements include shaping Washington State's Accessibility Code and being appointed by President Obama to the U.S. Access Board to lead the nation in setting accessible design standards in compliance with the Americans with Disabilities Act and other guiding laws. 25% of the world's population has dyslexia. Artist Lessons to Thrive 18.1 presents Madeline Marie Hymas' art installation, Dyslexic Advantage. Hymas developed Dyslexic Advantage to educate viewers about dyslexia, the world's most common learning disability. She received an award of excellence from the Kennedy Center's VSA Emerging Young Artist Program for this artwork. Dyslexic Advantage's visual design and bold text make a profound impact. The artwork teaches audiences that, despite dyslexia's prevalence in society, many people have misconceptions about what dyslexia is and how individuals with dyslexia process information. Photographer Martin Homela's Artist Lessons to Thrive feature teaches forgiveness. As the Laditsa Massacre's 75th anniversary was approaching, Homela knew he wanted to document the survivors' stories. On June 10, 1942, the Nazi regime ordered the complete annihilation of the Laditsa village in retaliation for a fatal attack on one of its high-ranking officers. With the intention of erasing the village from all of history, Laditsa's 102 homes, its school, church, and cemetery were set on fire. The Nazis blew up and bulldozed all that remained after the horrific blaze. Most tragically, they massacred 340 of its 500 residents. When Homela photographed Laditsa's survivors, he knew time was of the essence due to their advanced ages. He chronicled portraits of the survivors in their present-day homes to show how they lived. He also took them back to the sites of their childhood homes on the memorial grounds. As ambassadors of goodwill, Hamala described how Laditsa's survivors met with German students at the memorial many decades after the war and explained to them, if we can't admit it, the atrocity happened and become friends, there is a chance that history, hatred, xenophobia, and racism will not be repeated. Topics of community connect to our studies of democracy with examples ranging from Hamala's photographs of rebuilding community and Vinoy Struder's depictions of Tennessee walking horses that reference his love for his hometown, Lamore Trace, Tennessee. Artist examples such as these are resources we can apply as we build powerful learning communities with our students. This presentation has provided numerous ideas to implement meaningful curricular tasks centering on democracy that include art products, written statements, and student discussions inspired by diversified artists. We address democratic themes including peace, protection, rejuvenation, honesty, accessibility, and forgiveness. Our concluding artwork is titled Immokalee Morning, created by school children under the guidance of artist in residence Carlos Alves and J.C. Carroll. The Children's Everglades community is home to a farming coalition that has made positive changes for migrant farm workers through its campaigns and programs to ensure rights, responsibility, and livable wages. Reflecting on the artist examples you have seen throughout this presentation and your own teaching and learning experiences, contemplate the steps you will take to promote democracy through creative curriculum design and inquiry practices. 
Thanks so much for participating in this presentation on Promoting Democracy with me, Deborah sigler voigt Professor of Art Education and author of Teaching and Learning in Art Education. This just begins our journey to thrive and succeed in teaching our students and helping them meet their learning goals. If you need more information, my website is www.arted.us. You can also email me at arteducation.us at gmail.com and also I have lots of helpful free resources for you that you can download including PowerPoints and handouts for your, you and your students on curriculum design and assessment. I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.